Hello everyone. Happy Monday to you. I hope that you had a good weekend. I had a busy weekend. We had a I worked outside on um, Saturday and a little bit of Sunday and uh, I was planting my herb gardens and I still have more herbs I'm going to be planting um, and then I do some by seed and then I do some by transplants and they smell absolutely wonderful and uh, planting some potatoes and some onions and just getting gardens ready and so forth. We've had a lot of rain, which kind of makes it difficult sometimes to work in the garden because then it's a muddy mess and it's not good to you know plant things when the, thing, uh, the, the dirt is waterlogged. But anyways, busy, and then my son-in-law had a birthday party, um, and so that was fun also. But today I wanted to focus on um, spiritual prepping and what I mean by that because as everyone knows my name is Hidden Prepper on YouTube and so I am a prepper and very glad that I am a prepper um, and I think it's extremely important especially what we've seen going on these last certain amount of years and things getting much more um, you know in, in a, almost a crisis like mode of every day something happening and you know supply chains and so forth and it's also good just to prep for natural disasters like you know that happen all over the world and then you see pictures of people starving no clean water no electricity and nobody tends to think about these things until it happens and then a lot of times that makes them into preppers and so uh, it's good to prep and I know I have a lot of preppers that watch this channel but I also want to talk about spiritual prepping about your soul because I believe that is the absolute number one thing to focus on first and foremost and then all of it outflows from that because God is to be number one and so um, when we put him first he grants us wisdom and discernment. He grants us things that, you know, um, about the right way to do things, about not wasting money. If we ask him, he tells us to ask him these things. And so a personal relationship with him is paramount because in reality, if your soul is not prepped, but your whole house barns are overflowing with preps and you don't know the Lord, you have lost everything, you know, at death. And so my channel is to, you know, prepare people spiritually for the afterlife of heaven or not. And so, you know, or hell. And so that may not be a popular, popular subject, but I'm not here to be popular. Um, I'm here to uh, share the good news of Jesus Christ and what the Bible says. And I hear a lot of people say that, oh, you know, I can't find any good biblical teaching anymore or, you know, my church closed down during the COVID and then when it opened back up, it's like completely woke, um, a bunch of nonsense in not the gospels being preached, you know. So um, I think it's extremely important that people follow the Bible and what it says and rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, obviously we're humans and we can get things wrong. And, uh, you know, and so then we should seek the truth, you know, correctly when we do. But our soul is first and foremost paramount and that everything flows from that. So I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures and then expound on them. The first one is from Jesus Christ talking. And he says, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who parts from me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you stay joined to me and my words remain in you, okay, you may ask any request that you like and it will be granted. My true disciples produce much fruit and this brings me great glory to my father. 
I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Okay, and that's John 15, 5 through 9. So I know that a lot of preppers, uh, you know, some preppers, uh, most preppers do some kind of gardening. Some new preppers may just start stacking, and that's the best thing at first, you know. But I encourage everyone to do gardening. Um, you know, if you don't want to start out with seeds and all that, I actually never do seeds in little containers, um, you know, and grow them and then transplant them outside. It's complete. I've done it for. It's a mess. I know tons of people do that. I have directly sown them into the ground and in the past and, you know, have had really good results because I have good soil that I've amended really well. Um, but then you can also go to stores and you can buy, you know, um, fruits and vegetables already grown. They're, of course, way more expensive than seeds, but you can do that if you don't feel confident in the seeds. But my point is all of this with Jesus Christ. He is given, in a lot of the parables, gardening um, and growing and the agricultural advice because back then everyone did it. And so a lot of people nowadays don't really understand this because they don't grow gardens or they don't, you know, um, have fruit trees and so forth or, you know, trimming or pruning and that kind of thing. And so basically, you know, obviously when a branch is cut off, it's going to die unless you are, you know, um, grafting it into another tree and so forth. And that's a whole nother level of gardening, but it's going to die, wither away, and it takes off to be burned. Okay. You know, thrown into a compost pile, whatever. And so when we remain with the father and close with him, with Jesus Christ, having the words of the Bible in put into our lives daily, praying to him, seeking him, we grow and we produce much fruit. So, you know, when I go out to my pear tree and I'm cutting off branches and I'm throwing it into my backwood compost pile, that's the end of it. They're done, okay? But also pruning produces new shoots and health and vigor for the tree. And so, you know, the Lord sometimes prunes things out of our lives because they're not producing fruit. They're a bunch of junk. It's a bad thing. And he prunes us, which can be painful, and but it produces good fruit in us. So, you know, the first point is staying with the Lord, reading the word of God, putting him first in your life daily, and, you know, you will produce much fruit. And that gives glory to the Father. Another wonderful verse is 1 Peter 2, 2 through 3, and it says, You must crave pure spiritual milk so that you can grow into the fullness of your salvation. Cry out for this nourishment as a baby cries for milk. Now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. So once we're saved, we don't just stop there. We are to cry out to the Lord, asking for wisdom, discernment, for him to fill us, seeking pure spiritual milk, which is the teaching of the, the Bible, and not some, you know, watered down teaching that's not getting you anywhere. That's just a feel good teaching. It's the whole counsel of God. I believe in going through the whole Bible, the Old Testament, to the New Testament because it's all valid, it's all important, and we can learn valuable lessons from all of it. So seek that pure spiritual milk, and then we are to move on to meat, the Bible says, okay, the heartier stuff. So then I'm going to read two more, and then I'll be done. The next one is um, Ephesians 4, 14 through 15. It says, we will no longer be like children forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or because someone has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like the truth. Instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. There are so many false teachings out there now that are really kind of cleverly disguised, 
to sound like the truth and sound right. I've had to, I've talked to many people, um, typically younger people who it sounds like they'll tell me something and I'm like, well, actually that's not biblical. That is a lie. This is what they snuck in there. So to know the truth, we've got to read the truth, the word of God. We've got to read it over and over again because you will always learn something new by reading the Bible. God will always impress something new on your spirit. And if you don't understand something, ask him to give you wisdom and discernment and seek out reliable sources and reliable Bible commentaries, usually from older, you know, like old, you know, the people are all dead, you know, commentaries because they have it right most of the time. And so a lot of the newer things, um, unless it's a, you know, a really established good biblical pastor, you know, I don't trust. I, I tend to always go to the old school and, you know, look up and research things that way. So basically, don't get tossed to and fro, you know, in every direction, believing everything. Test it and see if it's real. And the very last thing that I will read is, um, it's a little bit longer scripture. It's 2 Peter 1, 3 through 12. And it says, as we know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. He has called us to receive his own glory and goodness. And by that same mighty power, he has given us all of his rich and wonderful promises. He has promised that you will escape the decadence all around you, uh, all around you caused by evil desires and that you will share in his divine nature. So make every effort to apply the benefits of these promises to your life. Then your faith will produce a life of moral excellence. A life of moral excellence leads to knowing God better. Okay, and I'm actually going to stop there since I'm at the 12 minute mark. But basically, if you read that, there is things that have to be done to have the promises that he's talking about. He gives us the promises but we have to take effort to know him better, to read the word of God, to understand it, to pray to him, to ask him for wisdom and knowledge. And then he promises to give us these things and to be able to have the strength and power to escape the decadence that's all around us that is caused by evil desires and to share in his divine nature. Because if we look all around the world right now, it is a bunch of evil, decadence, debauchery. It is absolutely sickening. And we can see lawlessness increasing more and more, like he said would happen. So make sure that when you're prepping, you are spiritually prepping first and foremost, because your soul is most important. You know, some terrible disaster can happen and your preps could not even be used but your soul's ready and you are immediately ushered into the presence of the Almighty. So that is the first and foremost and then everything comes after that. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.